Massive protest rallies were held throughout Pakistan on the call of the unjustly incarcerated former Prime Minister Imran Khan. PTI's founding chairman, Mr. Khan, who has now been jailed by the fascist regime in Pakistan for 218 days, had given the call to protest the unabashed theft of the country's mandate by the country's powerful military-backed regime. The peaceful, unarmed protesters in Punjab once again experienced severe crackdown by the brutal Punjab police. There are reports of arrests of several protesters and PTI leaders, including Barrister Salman Akram Raja. A first peaceful protest and rally was held in Peshawar under the newly appointed PTI government in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, led by Chief Minister Ali Amin Gandapur. As always, the people of KP came out in massive numbers to protest against the unprecedented pre- and post-rigging across the country in the recent elections. Attendees demanded the immediate release of the illegally detained former Prime Minister of Pakistan, Imran Khan. The name of PTI's Secretary General Omar Ayub Khan was submitted to the Speaker of the National Assembly as Sunni Ittihad Council's candidate for leader of the opposition on Saturday. Following which, Omar Ayub Khan clearly laid out the priorities of PTI, which are to demand and ensure the release of Imran Khan, his wife Mrs. Bushra Khan, and all political prisoners, along with that, making sure that the stolen mandate of the people of Pakistan is returned to the rightful recipients of the people's vote would remain the party's precedent. Pakistan Tehreek Insaf's social media team has published a preliminary version of its white paper on rigging in elections 2024, detailing how electoral integrity was compromised through blatant pre- and post-poll rigging. This detailed account consists of 185 pages of data complete with references. A bomb blast in a motorcycle near Bord Bazaar, Peshawar killed two people and injured one. Investigators collected the wreckage of the motorcycle, which was filled with explosives after the bomb exploded prematurely, according to investigators. Israeli forces intensified attacks across the Gaza Strip, killing at least 13 women and children in the Nusirat refugee camp and destroying a residential tower in Rafah. Meanwhile, in northern Gaza, an infant and a young woman died of malnutrition, taking the number of known starvation deaths to 25. At least 30,960 Palestinians have been killed and 72,524 injured in Israeli attacks on Gaza since October 7th.